After six months of waiting, to get the DC to DC converter replaced, it's finally time to bring in my 2022 Lexus NX450H Plus to the dealership to get it replaced. But this visit occurred over two days. Let's get to it and see why it took two days and not just the hour and a half. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today I'm here to provide an update on my ownership experience on the 2022 Lexus NX450H Plus. This time, visiting the dealership is one extra visit outside of any regular maintenance schedule, and this time it's for a recall job to be done. If you followed me on my channel, you would know that this is actually the recall and it's related to the DC to DC replacement, which if not done, could actually cause or increase the risk of a vehicle fire. So I'm glad that this actually got done before the recent deep freeze in where I live. And I know some places in the southern states, you've also experienced similar temperatures. It's actually quite interesting because we definitely know something is wrong. Global warming is really a thing. So where I live, it's actually been minus 18 degrees Celsius and with the windshield, it can go down to minus 26 degrees Celsius. And Lexus has recommended to not charge the vehicle if it actually goes down to five degrees Celsius. So you can see that it's way beyond that. Follow me on Instagram at LSFT videos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon. And or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home. At no Anyways, as usual, I will go through the service invoice to see what has gone been done and then talk a little bit more on the reasoning why things are being done. All right. So in the introduction, I said that this recall job took two days. Well, I arrived at the dealership for an appointment at 8, 8 a.m. and I picked up the car the second day after work. So the biggest reasoning was because that there was more than just the DC to DC converter that was done in my vehicle. So the service invoice, seeing on the screen right now, you can see that the first item was the RF4 DC to DC converter and it took 1.3 hours to get done. So what they did was they replaced the DC to DC converter. And because this DC to DC converter requires the mechanic to have a hybrid license to actually do the job. So not every per a mechanic or technician in the dealership can actually get this job done. So that could be another reason why certain things can only be done by certain technicians and time could actually delay it a bit. And you can see that there is no price to this because Lexus will be paying for this recall. So the second item here is just that there is a courtesy car. So I did get a courtesy car. I got a NX350 and after driving it, definitely, I really like my 450H Plus much more. And the third item here, it says Lexus vehicle inspection. So I'm assuming that they just did an inspection to make sure everything was working properly after the job was done. So moving on to the second page, this is where the extra things that were done. So during the holiday season, I actually had issues with my 12 volt battery. It actually one day decided to give in and not start my vehicle. So I was able to open the door. I was able to start the car a little bit and then I see the wipers going very slowly. And then suddenly it just gave me those errors saying that the hybrid system cannot start or the parking brake cannot be engaged. So at that point, I already know that it is the 12 volt battery because I've experienced it before last year in the winter as well. So 
first thing I did was, okay, I have a trickle charger in the back of the car. So what I did was try hoping that the 12 volt battery was still okay. I can still open the door. And fortunately I was able to open that rear door. I put down the back seats and I pulled out the trickle charger and plugged it in. So after that, I actually let it charge for three days almost. I think it's about two days before I actually drove the car again. So that should have been enough time to fully charge that vehicle. So after that, fully charged, I actually used the vehicle again. And again, about one week's time, the car already gave me another issue. Uh, the 12 volt battery seemed to not be able to start the car again. This time, I was able to open the door. I was able to um, start the car in a sense where it still gave me that error. I knew that the 12 volt battery is not good enough again. So at that point, again, pulled out the trickle charger, charged the vehicle again. So when I was looking at, okay, I should drive short distances. And, but during that holiday season, I did not really drive that many short distances. I actually drove, if people know where the GTA is, I drove from Northern Richmond Hill to Sherway Gardens, which is in the Tobacco. That's about like a 45 minute drive and going there and coming back and during that week. So that didn't seem to be right. So I was actually monitoring the 12 volt battery. And at that time I went to the dealership and told them that it actually required a boost two times during the holiday season. So I told the service advisor that a vehicle actually required to be boosted twice during the holiday season and that I was not really driving that many short distances. So it felt that there was something wrong with the 12 volt battery so they had to investigate and actually do a load test. So according to the service invoice it says that the battery failed, load test and it needed a battery replacement. So Lexus actually replaced the battery under warranty at no cost to me. and. Service advisor did say that one of the battery cells failed. So something wrong with those OEM batteries? I don't know, but definitely it was replaced. So now I have a brand new 12 volt battery in my vehicle. I'll talk a little bit more about the 12 volt battery after I've gone through the invoice. So then the next item here you see check and report on wireless charger. So you've heard about me talking about the wireless phone charger. Doesn't work on the iPhone 14, doesn't work on the 15 Pro Max, doesn't work on my Google Pixel 8 Pro. So what is the use of a car charger, right? Well, so finally they gave in. I actually actually asked that, can I try my phones on a 2024 NX model? And the service provider said, okay, I do have an iPhone. And then it seems like they knew something about it. I am assuming that they know that the iPhones will work on the charger. I don't know, but then they said, okay, they'll have a look at it and report a complaint. And then it got approved to get replaced. So it was related to this wireless charger that caused this visit to be two days because they did not have it in stock and they had to order it from Lexus Canada and Lexus Canada had it in stock. So they were waiting for the shipment of the, of the part and then install it the next day. I will not be going through the wireless charger and how effective it is in this video because this video will become too long and you'll get bored to death. So stay tuned to the next video where I'll be talking more about that wireless charger and see if it actually has improved or it's the same wireless charger that we had when it came from Japan. All right, then the next item we had was quality control inspection. So they had to do a quality control just to make sure that everything that was done was good. So that was done by another technician just to double check that the car was done and everything was done properly. So as we flip over to the next page, you can see that this page has nothing. It only says that the total invoice is zero which is good news, which means everything was done under warranty and this visit was just purely getting things corrected. So I'm hoping that most people who actually get their job done are done through warranty and there's no charge and you'll be more happier after you leave the dealership. 
All right, so I've gone through the invoice, the service, and there's not much to talk about the DC to DC in converter. It's just saying that it's been replaced and that now I can charge below five degrees. And as recently, it's gone down to like minus 12, minus 18. And I've actually charged outdoors when I went to the office. So everything seems to be going well. All right, then now let's look into that 12 volt battery. So what did Lexus, the dealership, do what did they replace the battery with so first things first they replaced my battery and they actually helped me install the trickle charger cables as well so they took them out and put them back in so they didn't just say okay it's not oem i'm not going to put them back in so they definitely helped me put those red and black cables back into the new battery which is good for them so i don't have to go and do it again which is Great, so because now I can still trickle charge this battery, but I haven't done it yet. All right, so first impression was it felt that the battery was a bit smaller, but when I looked at the specs, it didn't. It was actually not as not small as we thought. So first thing, first impression when I opened up the cover, it felt like a smaller battery. So I put the battery's pictures side by side. So the right one is the one that the old one, and the left one is the new one. So you can definitely see that it's a little bit different in design, uh, even though the stickers are different. But even when you look into uh, where they have the stickers on the lower part, there's a light indicator. I don't see the light indicator here anymore. And that the battery is definitely different. And this one that I have on the left side, which is the new battery, it felt like more of a North American made battery versus the one on the right is a Japanese made battery. So shoving my phone into the battery compartment, you can see that it says Lexus Genuine Parts. So it's definitely a Lexus Genuine battery and not an aftermarket one, definitely an OEM one. And then on the other side, we see Premium 84. So this is a so-called 84 month battery and the part number is COPBS8497R. It's a Group 97R battery and the code cranking amps is 600 and the battery reserve is 95 RC. So I searched around and found that if we look at the specs for the 450H plus, the size, the BCI number is 47. So it should be using 47 group, but Lexus, the dealer actually put in 97 R. So there are two actually different sizes. And maybe that's why when I looked at them, they look a little bit different. So purely looking at the difference, the BCI 47, which is the OEM one is 245 millimeters by 175 millimeters by 192 millimeters. And the one that Lexus put in the 97R is actually larger at 252 millimeters in length. So I thought that it was actually smaller, but in fact, it was about six millimeters bigger. And I didn't even notice that, but you can tell you six millimeters is really 0.6 centimeters. So you really won't know the difference. So I think that's why they chose the 97R because that is the closest one that they can fit into the vehicle. I am no 12 volt battery expert, but I'm trying to compare this old battery compared to the new battery, which one's actually better. So you can see here, we have a 20 hour, 60 amp hour battery and it says CCA 345A. I don't know if it's 345 amps cold cranking amps or what it is. I don't know how to decode this. So I went around and try to understand a little bit more. And then if you know more, please leave in the comments below. What does this all mean? And what is the cold cranking amps for the old battery? So one thing I looked into was I went to UK and looked for a battery company. So I picked the NX450 and you can see here it comes with a 20 hour 62 amp hour battery and it has a 550 amps. So that's the cold cranking amps and it has EN. So I'm assuming right now the old battery only has 345 cold cranking amps. I'm hoping that that's correct. But if you look at here, it does say that if the, you picked a 62 amp hour, 20 hour battery, you get 20% more capacity and 
better power. And that gives you 550 amps of cold cranking amps. And if you upgrade to the 640 or the 600, you can definitely see that the numbers are different. Now it goes to a 65 amp hour battery. And as I continue to dig, I think I found the supplier for Toyota. When we actually brought the car from Japan, this is the battery that we're getting. You can see here they have the 340 LN0, they have a 375 LN2. So the battery that we got was a 360 LN2. Okay, the 370, from what my understanding is, that is the grade, the performance grade. So according to their brochure, you can see here they say 375 LN2. LN2 is actually the size. 375 is the performance ranking. All right, so the battery that we got from Lexus was 360 LN2. So I got some references here. I don't see the 360 LN2, but I do see a 375 LN2. And it says it's a 60 amp hour for 20 hours, which is exactly the same as what we have. And the cold cranking amps is 550. And the reserve is 87 minutes. So when you look at that, and then you look into the battery that we had, it said 345 cold cranking amps. And if that's the case, then we compare this back to what I got changed with. It does feel that the 600 cold cranking amps is definitely better than what we have in this old battery, the 345 amps. So from looking at it, the battery that they replace looks like a better battery and hopefully this will not happen again. Again, I'm not a battery 12 volt battery expert. So if you know more about it, please leave in the comments below and let me know do you feel that this new battery that I just received is a better battery than the original battery that came with the vehicle? So there we have it. This is the DC to DC converter re replacement, which took two days, and but they fixed three things, right? They replaced the wireless charger, they replaced the 12 volt battery, and hopefully that's a better 12 volt battery. And on top of that, they actually did the DC to DC recall. And of course, they did a car wash, and then I got my vehicle back. If you're interested in knowing the replacement of the wireless charger, stay tuned to the next video and where I'm going to dissect a little bit more, go deep into does the new charger work with the phones that I own. So it would be the iPhone 14 Pro, the 15 Pro Max, or the Google Pixel 8 Pro. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.